rap beef starting over a snitching accusation? In the realm of hip hop, I could definitely see that happening. On top of beefing with Drake, A.R. Ab, and Nicki Minaj's ex-boyfriend Safari, Meek Mill also became embroiled in a beef with the game. So with this episode of the Meek Mill rap beef saga, we delve deeper into the Meek Mill and game beef. Meek and Game had a working relationship of nothing else as they have a song together on Game's album, the documentary 2 Collector's Edition, titled The Soundtrack, which was released in January 2016. Ironically enough, another song of the same name by the Game was featured on his following album, 1992, released in October 2016, which also featured a track dissing Meek Mill, but I'll be getting to that in a minute. The beef between these two started in September 2016 when Game accused Meek Mill of snitching on him regarding the robbery of Sean Kingston's chain back in June that year. According to Game, Meek talked to police and told them that Game or someone in his circle was behind the robbery and he went off on Meek Mill during a concert calling him a snitch and saying he wanted to fight him one on one. It's nice to see a rapper just wanting to fight rather than shoot it out or get on social media and have Twitter fingers, but the only rapper I remember game fighting is 40 Glock, if you can really call it that. Game then dropped a diss track, 92 bars aimed at Meek Mill. Like other diss tracks by the game, such as the classic 300 bars aimed at G-Unit, Game goes off for several minutes straight with no chorus. Game references the Sean Kingston robbery and Meek allegedly snitching with the lines, I got a chick from Minneapolis, pack a semi, bang the ratchet at Denny's and fly herself back to Philly. She got a couple mil and she don't even know Meek. And ever since that nigga snitched on me, we just don't speak. Some of the hardest lines aimed at Meek came right afterwards, however. See that issue you got with Drake is like a slow leak. Blood will be dripping like Niagara if I poke Meek. Nikki won't get no sleep. I'm coming through at 4 a.m. 4 deep to leave his dead body on the soaked sheets. It could happen low key. You better have Ross call me or you gonna be eye level with a roach feet. This ain't a diss nigga. This is all lives matter except this niggas. Which is of course a reference to the Black Lives Matter movement which started back in 2013. Those lines also weren't the only reference game made to the beef of Drake and Meek, as right afterwards he has the following lines. My nigga Drizzy packed you out and you ain't do-ish. This the golden state and my shooters ain't on no hoop-ish, nigga. You know that I snap you like a toothpick and snitching on niggas ain't never been no cool-ish. He then even states an interest in Nicki Minaj, who Meek was still with at the time, with the lines. And I've been wanting to give Nicki this pool stick, so tell your little vibrant thing, come F with Q-tip. Vibrant Thing being a reference to the hit solo single by Q-Tip. Game was featured in the music video to the Nicki Minaj song Pills and Potions from her third album, Pink Print, which released around the time Meek and her got together. Shortly afterwards, Big Meech, one of the co-founders of BMF, reached out to Meek Mill, telling him to be careful about beefing so he doesn't wind up in prison himself, and Meek shared it on Instagram. Game and Meek proceeded to have an Instagram beef for a little while, with Sean Kingston also jumping into this game, you the same nigga, your mama was a crip, you a blood, listen you fake ass hoe ass nigga, you a stripper, the whole world know what you about hoe ass nigga, you trying to sell some hours, how the fuck you look beefing with a pop star nigga, you know what the fuck happened in the club, them niggas ran up, hit me in the fucking head with a bottle nigga, they took off my jewelry, nobody shot no fade with me, nobody did nothing, you a hoe ass nigga, Botty boy, suck your bumbuck like my pussy wall, 
How you feel like, boy? Got to see a nigga that put a bum up I change a heart show, nigga. You want to change a heart show? What the fuck you talking about? You a disgrace to the blood, nigga. I fuck with real bloods, you whole ass nigga. Fuck you. Everything you claim for, whole ass nigga. You 43 years old, still trying to do music, bitch. Hit me up. I need a hook. I need you to write for me, Sean. I'm trying to do some shit. Nigga, I was a fan of the documentary. You been ass ever since, bitch. Yeah, I'm a fat nigga. The world know I'm a fat nigga. I went platinum being a fat nigga. Fat nigga that'll still fuck your bitch, nigga. Anywhere, nigga, you buff ass, steroid ass nigga. Going to run in cannon every day. 48 of fitness, 48 of fitness. Go take another steroid pill, you hoe ass nigga. You was wearing a thong, nigga. You can't talk to me. I ain't no rapper. I ain't gotta be no street nigga. The world know what you is, nigga. You ain't even good in your own city, nigga. You was beefing with your brother, Big Face 100, nigga. He the real street nigga. Stop rapping about your brother like you hoe ass nigga. You a hoe, and the whole world know. Black Wall Street, eat a dick, you bitch. And Drake even jumped in to make a post supporting the game's new album. It's not too surprising given that Drake was beefing with Meek at the time and Game and Drake had collaborated on the song 100 from Game's album Documentary 2, which had been released back in October 2015. Meek Mill then teamed up with O'Malley and Beanie Siegel to fire a diss track back at Game with their remix to the Young M.A. hit single, Ooh. Throughout the track, the crew take various shots at Game and his street credibility, as well as his brief stint as a stripper. Beanie Siegel's only lines in the song were, One phone call, I'm in LA in three hours. The bully, please don't bring me out of retirement. But that was enough for Game to take aim at Beanie now as well. After the track was released, Game made an IG post dissing Beanie for losing a lot of weight and claiming that he looks like an addict and needs to go back to rehab. Nipsey Hussle then chimed in regarding the Meek and Game beef with tweets of his own stating that people need to stop hyping up the beef between the two and that no one needs to kill each other. Essentially, he wanted them to squash the beef before things went any further, and it's a nice thing to see. It's unfortunate that we lost a younger rapper like Nipsey who was not for all the negativity among rappers. The beef may have started over alleged snitching, but according to findings by TMZ, Meek Mill was not mentioned at all in the police report, meaning he had not spoken to the police, and the game apparently wasn't named either, and on top of that, Sean Kingston allegedly hadn't even talked to the police about the situation himself. However, Game insisted that police had indeed spoken to him about it. Only a few days after dropping 92 bars, Game came back at Meek and crew with another diss track, that being his own remix to Ooh, just like they had done. It was called Pest Control, which of course is a reference to Meek being a snitch, or in this case, a rat. He sets off his first verse with the line, All rats got die though. So yeah, like his beef with 50 Cent, he insists on calling his opponent a snitch. With lines like, This nigga take an L every time he go viral, he essentially disses Meek for the beef with Drake. It's a funny line as typically going viral would be considered a win, but Meek went viral back in 2015 because of being in a beef with one of the biggest artists at the time and getting dissed repeatedly. Game also had the line, still chasing dreams, I made dreams in 05 though, which is a reference to the fact that Meek Mill's group and mixtape series is called Dream Chasers, and Game has a hit single called Dreams that was released back in 05 on the documentary album. Game also makes a reference to O'Malley's Swain the Morning freestyle from 2014 with a line, We seen your sway freestyle, O'Malley ain't the answer. Then a clip plays from the infamous Kanye West interview also on Sway in the Morning. He goes on to diss Beanie for getting involved in the beef with the lines, Yeah, take beans back to rehab. On Instagram, looking like a mother effing beanbag. That being a reference to Beanie Siegel going to rehab back in 03 for his drug problem. Sean Kingston wasn't left out of this diss track either with lines like Sean Kingston got robbed and now you niggas best friends, fat sloppy twinkie eating ass nigga. So yeah, no one is immune from Game's wrath on this track. Game ends his second verse with the lines, you're like a boat with a hole, you can't sail Meek Mill, me and Drake gave you them two L's. Which sums everything up quite nicely as it is a reference to the L's in Meek's name as well as his perceived loss in his beef with Drake. As usual, other people gave their opinions on the beef. Fellow Philly rapper Gilly the Kid, for example, got on Instagram and said that someone has to die in the beef or it ain't real. I ain't even know this shit with Meek and Game was going on, man. That's been crazy. Somebody gotta die. If somebody don't die, that shit don't mean nothing. Somebody gotta die. At this point, 
Somebody got to pull that pistol out and, 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 put, and put some action down. You know what I mean? If not, this shit going to be fake, man. This just fake beef ever, man. Somebody got to die. Only way I see it. Didn't Gilly have a beef with Wayne and Birdman years ago? I can't help but wonder where that stance was back then. Either way, it's a sharp contrast to Nipsey's stance on the beef. Game went on the Wendy Williams show around this time as well and was asked about the beef, to which she had likened to the beef between Tupac and Biggie, since Meek is from the East and Game is from the West. Fortunately, the game essentially stated that it was going to stay on wax. So, what's going on with you and Meek Mill? Um, you know what it is? A little, it's a little hip hop beef, you know? But chase me on. Uh oh, here she go. But, but I'm just saying that's not good. You know, yeah. this harkens back to the East Coast, West Coast, Coast from back in the day with Tupac and Biggie, and nothing good ended up of that. And, you know, you got kids, and I know that you and Snoop and, uh, have been very involved with um, gang violence and getting together with the police. And I know you have your, um, um, your what's your charity called? Robin Hood Project. Robin Hood Foundation. Uh -huh. You're a good dude, man. <laughs> <clears throat> Why are, you, why are you fighting with this man? It's not uh we haven't had a fight yet. You're not going to have a fight. Yeah, I'm just saying, you know, it's not a fight. It's just, it's just hip hop. Dream Chaser's artist Chino also hopped into the beef with tweets talking about Game having a ghostwriter, allegedly someone named Marcus Black. Yeah, this whole ghostwriter thing got a bit ridiculous. If you've seen the video about Meek Mill and Drake, you know that this is like a running theme in these beefs. Game would ease up on the beef, at least temporarily, due to a change of heart spurred by the murder of Terrence Crutcher, an unarmed black man that was tased and shot by officers Tyler Turnbaugh and Betty Shelby, respectively. Shelby was indicted on charges, but ultimately found not guilty of first-degree manslaughter. This, however, would not be enough to completely stop the beef. In an interview on Sirius XM around this time, Game detailed how the beef started and the 3 a phone call he had of Meek Mill and Sean Kingston regarding the situation. If he ain't lie about it. So what happened was I got Meek on the phone and I was like, you told Sean that. He was like, I ain't tell that fat motherfucker nothing. So I said, <laughs> hey, damn, that's a little key snitching too. My bad. Now I'm fucking <laughs> with you. Nah, so he said, I ain't tell that. I ain't tell him nothing. So I said, you know what? We gonna fix this. Call Sean Kingston on the three-way. It's Sean Kingston, me, Meek on the three-way. And, uh, you know, he going off on Sean Kingston. I ain't tell you nothing. Sean Kingston saying, yes, you did. Yes, you did. And he's saying, and he saying motherfucker, you bitch ass nigga. So I just hung up the phone, man, because I'm like. Right. We don't have time for that. I can't, man. So uh, after the, you know, after the detectives that came to my crib, I was like, yo, that's wild. But I still held it to myself. But then I got drunk. And you know how this Patron do. I got drunk in Miami <laughs> one night. I'm in Miami, man. And, and you know what I'm saying? I'm partying. And I got drunk, and you know, you tell the truth, and it come out. So yeah. I grabbed a mic, and I'm like, out of nowhere, I'm like, fuck Meek Mill. And myself was like, hey, huh? Why, why'd you say that? And then, you know what I'm saying? And so from then, I had to I had to ride it out. And so that's what we're doing. And so he he um, he um uh said what he had to say with some memes and whatever. We got Instagrams, and so it went back and forth. And then he fucked up. He got my favorite beat of now, which is the Young M.A. beat. Super but cool. yeah, I love that beat, right? I love that song. So uh, uh, so he jumped on that beat. And then he did the ultimate fuckery. He went and got beans right. to help. Rap mogul Russell Simmons around this time stated that he had a conversation with Game and Meek Mill about their beef and got them to agree to not publicly post negatively about each other anymore and that they agreed to have a meeting. Game's manager, WAC 100, would quickly refute this claim. Apparently not quite ready to squash the beef yet, Game then filmed a video for Pest Control, which came out about a week after the song was released. Game was also seen in Philadelphia driving around listening to Beanie Siegel's music and giving the cheesesteaks that Philly is so well known for, basically attempting to clown his opponents by being in their city. Perhaps one of the more unexpected things from this beef was the fact that Drag On from the Rough Riders stepped into this game. On 92 bars, Game has the line, I'm the ODMX, you niggas drag on, which seems to have struck a chord with Drag On, as on a freestyle Drag On did shortly afterwards, he sent a few shots directly at Game. 
The game, in an interview with The Breakfast Club shortly after the release of the diss tracks, apologized to Nicki Minaj for the Instagram post he made, including a photo from the Pills and Potions video shoot that they did together and the caption he had on it dissing Meek. On September 21st, Shawty Lowe from the group D4L was killed in a car accident the day before he was scheduled to perform at a show in tribute to his father, which now had become a tribute to the both of them. And Beanie Siegel was set to perform in place of Shawty Lowe. While Beanie was in town for the show, he had an interview and stated that he helped them with some lines for the diss track towards game because he happened to come to the studio while they were working on it. Then on the 23rd, Beanie Siegel was set to perform at the Philadelphia stop of the Bad Boy Reunion Tour and apparently was jumped. Game went on Instagram and made a post talking about the situation. The social media beef between the two continued on some more. For example, WAC 100 spoke on Beanie Siegel getting jumped and blamed Meek Mill for the situation. Yo, check this out. Y'all niggas went back there and put your hands on beans, my nigga. On Paru and everything Paru stand for. Beans ain't told me shit about nothing. Now, if you pay attention to where this problem come from, and I'll go back to your man Meek. That nigga Beans been carrying Philly on his back for 20 plus years. Y'all violate that man in front of his wife and his kids, my nigga. That nigga ain't told us nothing, my nigga. Whoever the fuck did that need to be dealt with, my nigga. 100, it's all love, my nigga. Philly represents the peak, nigga, but it's power rule. Around this time, Meek appeared on Funkmaster Flex's show, and during his freestyle, he took shots at the people he was beefing with, including Drake and 50 Cent. Beanie Siegel wound up getting even further involved in his beef, and things turned into a back and forth between Beanie and Meek now. Personally, I think it's pretty funny how Beanie went from being on Meek's side to beefing with Meek himself that quick. Make sure to leave a comment below if you'd like to see me continue this Meek Mill saga by doing a video about the beef with Beanie Siegel. More shots went back and forth on social media interviews. Then in October, a phone conversation between Game and Beanie Siegel leaked, where Beanie essentially stated that he's not really cool with Meek like that, and he jumped into the beef because it was a Philadelphia thing. Well, you got every right to do whatever you want to do to me. That's your beef. I'm not calling about me. I don't care. I, I could yo, well, literally, I can get two shits. I'm not making no paper with me. Me can't try and do nothing for me. He ain't called me and asked me to do a record and all. You see how happy the nigga was when he smiled just for those two lines. It wasn't even about that. It wasn't about that, bro. I ain't getting no coin from me. My whole thing is like when I heard that, I can I can expect you to say I can expect you to say something, but I think you went a little too far about me. I didn't go too far, but you know me. That's game. I think I go too far. All right, that's all I wanted to know. You know what I mean? Like, for me, for game the things, nigga, I went too far. I think it's because I go too far because I think I go all the way. And I don't even, and I don't look back. Well, this is what I do know. I do know that if Beans went in that fucking studio and you ain't say I'm coming out of the time, then I would have never said nothing about Beans because I would never do that. I only speak their name in motherfucking legendary highlight with, 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 with hell of respect on it. I've only done that in my motherfucking team. That's true. He also had an interview in The Breakfast Club basically saying the same thing, that he jumped into the beef with those two bars just out of Philadelphia unity rather than a personal bond with Meek. Provide me what, what what loyalty with who? He ain't provide me no opportunity. He ain't called me and asked me to do that. Mm -hmm. I did that. I walked into Meek wasn't even there. It was just O'Malley in the studio. Oh, so, so how? Called you to the studio? No. Meek called you to the studio. No. So how'd you get to the studio? Who called? Like how do you know they? Was it wasn't no there? call. It wasn't no call. It was a, somebody told me, uh, Lil Chuck, Meek cousin, yo. O'Malley in the studio, they recording something. I go in there, oh, this is what y'all doing. I wasn't even gonna get on it. Mm -hmm. I was just like, all right, X, Y, Z, help you out. Nah, you gotta do this, bro, say this. I went in and referenced the track for him, and they just kept that part in there with my vocals. Two bars, that's all I said. I don't even think it was a whole two bar, maybe even a bar, mm -hmm. two bars. So they just kept my voice in there. Right. But I ain't get no phone call, Matt, come help, come ride, come do that. 
that ain't go down. Mm-hmm. I told y'all that on Tasco. I ain't get a call from O'Melly. I ain't get a call from me. They in the studio. I went to the studio. What's the situation? Around this time, Meek had an interview with Tax Stone in which they discussed various topics like the beef of Game and Beanie. Since I came in this rap game, like when we talk, let's talk about writing too. When we talk, Beanie Siegel, when he's saying, uh, he helped he me write he wrote my rap. For you and O'Melly. So basically, what's the meaning, what's the definition of he wrote for me and O'Melly? Like, say the definition in a sentence. Well, shit, I don't know. It means you wrote the song, but he said he, at first he said he did a couple bars. Yeah. For um, O'Malley. Um, then I think it might have changed a little bit in another interview. Yeah. Or, or something. Until he, he said he wrote Yeah Shit and um, O'Malley's. Well, look, say if he lying, how, how bad that would be for hip hop if he lying? <laughs> like seriously, how, how how bad would that be for for the culture? Say if he lying, say if Drake lying too. I mean, game lying too. Mm-hmm. Where is rap at if this is going on? I guess one person saying I told on him. This one nigga said I told him something about my girlfriend. Uh, uh, he wrote my raps. Say if they lying. Other beats were also going on around this time, like Drake versus Meek, Meek versus Safari, and Nicki Minaj versus Rami Ma all three of which I've covered on the channel before, so check them out if you haven't yet. Speaking of Nicki Minaj and Remy Ma beefing, the beef between Meek and Game sparked back up after Remy dropped the diss track, Sheeter. On that song, Remy said that she talked to Meek Mill about Nicki Minaj. In response to Meek Mill liking a post making fun of Nicki Minaj for getting dissed by Remy, Game made his own post bashing Meek Mill and making claims that Meek is the reason that her house got robbed and sending several insults his way. In response to this, Meek Mill made a post allegedly with O'Malley in response to Game, calling him a weirdo among other things. Hey, this nigga a weirdo, y'all know that shit. That paragraph was so fucking long. Who the fuck read that paragraph the nigga wrote? Ain't none of us read that shit yet. We like, yo, man, this nigga is trip. Man, fuck that shit, dog. This some weirdo shit. You gotta be a weirdo to write all this shit about another man. Yes, sir. And this bitch shit, nigga. You in the middle of some man? Get the fuck out of here, you weirdo. How's y'all even vouching for this shit? Y'all out here standing up for the wrong shit, man. We be on some real shit out here, man. Be fucking playing with us with that nut shit, real shit, man. We gonna fuck this bitch. That's all. We gonna do. That's all that's gonna happen. And my man. Mm, 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 mm. Huh. Huh, huh, huh. I know one of his baby mamas. Huh, 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 huh. Game came back in response to Meek Mill's post and Meek allegedly talking to Rami Ma about Nicki with another post of his own with a bunch of bars going at Meek. Once again, another beef for the social media jabs. Besides his consistent name dropping, Game is also well known for starting beefs with other rappers and even offering to fight them. For example, back in 2012 when he recorded himself beating up fellow California rapper 40 Glock. I guess essentially snitching on yourself is okay, but Meek allegedly talking to Sean Kingston is a problem. I would probably be upset too though if I was Sean Kingston. Game allegedly warned Meek about the situation but not him. That does seem a bit shady. Game's reasoning of Meek is a rapper and Sean is an R&B singer or whatever doesn't really seem like the most logical one. Do thieves really care about the genre of music a potential target mix? I doubt it. Either way, Meek was sentenced to two or four years in prison in November 2017 for a parole violation and was released roughly five months later in April 2018. Game and Meek Mill made amends shortly after Meek was released from prison. In an Instagram post in December, Game stated that he and Meek are cool again and that Meek was the one that reached out and called him once he was out of prison and that they spoke and patched things up. At this time, things were also a result of Meek Mill and Drake as well as Safari. Once again, check the videos out for the details. Game and Meek Mill would even release a song together later on as Meek was featured on the game album Dramatic Heart vs Mine, released in August 2022 on the track Talk To Me Nice, also featuring Moneybag Yo and Blast. One thing I've noticed with all these beefs involving Meek so far is a lot of tweets and Instagram posts going back and forth. If I had to pick a winner from this beef though personally, I would say game one if we're judging based on the diss tracks. Although there weren't many, 92 bars and pest control hit pretty hard. 
especially on top of the fact that Meek was already embroiled in a beef with one of the biggest artists of the time, Drake, as well as Nicki Minaj's ex-boyfriend Safari. Game had plenty of ammo to use against Meek both on and off wax. However, I'm still one to say that this is fortunately another beef that wound up being peacefully resolved. What are your thoughts on the beef? Do you think Meek Mill was a snitch? Let me know in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel to be notified on new videos. Click the thumbs up button if you liked the video. Join the Discord server if you want to come talk about hip hop and more. And of course, become a channel member to unlock certain perks and help support the channel further.